Good morning. I'm ready to reflect, reimagine, and reconnect. Are you? And we're going to talk about our Holiday Jams COVID edition today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering Without Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. It is episode 146. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, we're, gosh, we're quickly approaching the middle of December already. It's so crazy how fast December just kind of blows by. I am feeling the holiday spirit this year, and I don't, I guess it's because I don't know why. I just, I'm feeling good. I have mixed emotions about it. I, I, I am accepting the holiday COVID edition, but I am excited about it being the holidays. I will say the weather is nice, and I am grateful that my second round of uh, WBNL uh, merch uh, appeared. Magic. Yeah, un unpilfered by uh, a neighbor's clearing uh, hands. I have to say, I got a cool shirt, t-shirt, but what Matt's sporting there, I got its shirt with um, Be Forever wandering but not lost and it is super cozy yeah long, these, very long too these premium hoodies are very comfortable i have to admit yeah i'll be i'll be wearing them i'm going to get another one because you designed the wbno podcast uh one really cool and i really dig that a lot but i also like the align connect prosper and that's going to get us right into what we're talking about today you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet join us and subscribe on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. So why don't we just dive right in? Let's do in, it. In December, we, you know, we what we always do on the podcast is I like to do business planning in October, and that's all sort of like number crunching. Yeah, there's a little goal setting and stuff in there. And then in November, we really we really always spend a lot of time talking about gratitude, right? And ways to share that. And in December, I like to wrap it all up with uh, a few other this podcast series in December is really about you and getting the little reflecting inside and spending a little time on the, not just your business side, but really doing, and this is why I'm calling it reflect, reimagine and reconnect. And, and I think, did I tell that story last week? No, I just told you how I, I saw that. So I wanted to have this, oh, we have this yeah. alliteration right thing. And, and I was uh, just looking for, I had a bunch of RE words, right? Because I knew I wanted a few things in there. I knew what the theme was going to be. And I was driving at a stoplight and I turned to the left. And this is how inspiration happens sometimes. Is, That's right. Here's a banner. It was for Cox and it was rethink, reimagine, and reconnect. And I went, there it is. Except You're like, hey. Or reflect. <laughs> So that's how I got the title of it, but it's perfect because I just want to share some bullet points under each of these areas and just some things I'm doing uh, that, that help me and a few things I have found because I started to take, to go back and look at the things that helped me get centered and get focused and set my attention for the, the new year and kind of reflect on the past and so forth. So let's just jump in to reflect, right? So. It under reflect. Did you put any of these bullet points up or no? No, you didn't. Uh, not in here. They're all in the show notes. Yeah, you didn't. You're in the show notes. Okay. I yeah. want to start. Well, we'll do it on our. When we go back into our group next week, we'll, I can share a couple of the things that I won't be able to really share here on the podcast. Uh, that when we, because Monday we'll do. Monday we try to do things in our WBNL coaching group, which is absolutely free. We always have a link in the show notes to that right now. So That's right. And it is right down here at the bottom of the screen. Awesome. And Matt's been doing Wednesday Canva tips. Uh, just awesome. I've already learned so many things in three episodes of that. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Inspiring. Very much. And we, um, on Monday, I like to take maybe something that's been in the podcast or really Mondays are going to be true tips, uh, business tips, real estate tips. And right now, cost, we're, we're talking about mindset and kind of life tips, right? So right. we reflect. The thing about this is it's a little bit, it's a little deeper than what I already shared 
I think I shared it back in October, was the celebrate your successes. This is more about just taking an hour and spending a, uh, oh, you created like a whole document about that? No, this is the actual blog post. This is, these are our show notes. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, cool. If you're, if you're listening, you can't see this, but if you're over on YouTube, he's got some of the stuff that's up there. It's kind of hard to see, but um, you get the picture. Uh, so you got to schedule time to do this little exercise, okay? And you can just grab a piece of paper and you're just going, and I really highly recommend using your phone or using your social media, go to your photos and go to social media and just sit down and, and or just, you got to just get into a space. And I really recommend a breathing exercise or listening to some kind of reflective music. It could be classical music. I like guided meditations. I'm going to recommend big time and when I get into the reconnect part here. The Kelly Howell, I'll tell you more about stuff I'm listening with her. She's so cool. Brain sync. Those are my favorite, but there's so much out there. Just find something that appeals to you and resonates with you. But what made this year special? And Matt, you and I have been talking a little bit about this, but now it's time to actually sit down and do the exercise because it really sets you up instead of just having a chit chat about it like we are on a podcast or doing That's something. Right. Seriously, what made the year special? What were the memories? What were the highlights? Because honestly, they weren't all negative. Now, maybe there were some seriously negative things that happened in your life around the pandemic and just normal life. Uh, and the pandemic just made everything worse. It just accelerated and it heightened issues for everybody, isolation, depression. People had so many ways that they've been still dealing with all of this, right? So, yeah. but did you find some ways to, did you find other time for yourself or your family? Did you, you know, there's just definitely things that were positive if, if, if everybody looks at it. Um, from the negatives, you can come from the challenges. What were the, how did you overcome them? What were the lessons learned? You know, everything that we go through in our lives is all part of the journey. So I just really think it's so powerful. What are you grateful for this year? What do you want to improve on? So take time to reflect personally and in your business. Okay. You've already, we've already talked a lot about that on your business today. It's more about, hopefully you've already done that work. And if not, this is the time to do that too. But what about for you? Because you know what, if you don't have yourself in alignment and your brain, you know, you're the way you are feeling your emotions, your mindset, then you're disconnected from your business. Where you go, where your mindset goes, how you set your intentions, how you feel every day and you get up, that impacts your business. That impacts the people in your life, right? So you have to work on the whole being, not just like I get up and I'm a robot and I make phone calls. You know, you got to check in with yourself. Yeah. So the next R, the next little step in our alliteration here is reflect. I mean, sorry, reimagine. So now reimagine. I just really love that word, right? It could be rethink. It could be whatever, but we use that. Matt, you chose that in our yeah. uh, real estate reimagine because I like the word imagination because it's got more of an inspirational feel to it. Sure. Right. Um, isn't it Disney big word? Imagine. Well, yeah, imagine. They're, 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 they have their, their whole creative arm is the Imagineers. So I just, it resonates with me. I know it probably does for you too, but it's Absolutely all about it being creative, tapping into the creative side. So that reflection part, doing that little exercise can then move you into where can you really know, to me, this, this 2020, and there's so many things that are like, goodbye, all the memes that are out there, like trashing 2020. And yes, we all want to get past that and into 2021 and the light at the end of the tunnel and but we're still going to deal with this for quite a while. I mean, obviously, it's just not like, boom, it's gone. It's frankly worse, right? I mean, it's worse and worse and worse as far as uh, the virus. It seems like now, you and I were talking about the other day, the, the COVID-19. Don't you know more people now? It's like we went for months. was like, yeah, I don't even hardly know anybody who's yeah. who's uh, now every time I turn around, uh, people that we're working with in our industry, it seems like everybody either has had it or is dealing with it or knows somebody. I'd say it's like pretty hard for you not to be at least one degree of separation away from it anymore. I mean, yeah, that's it's not like 20 degrees like of separation that. anymore. So, yeah. So the, the reality is this, this year really is an opportunity to, for me, it's for, I a hundred percent made major life decisions sooner because of what priorities are. And so reimagining is going back on like, what are you really clear about your vision for yourself, your purpose for you, you know, do you just get up and go do a job? And, you know, so many people are like, I want to know what my purpose is or my 
you know, you just have to get in touch with that. Maybe what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. And you, and you know that it is what you're passionate about is if you get up every day and you can't wait to do it. Mm -hmm. And you're excited about how you're giving back and the services that you provide and no matter whatever it is you choose to do to serve. But now there's an opportunity for you to go, is this what you want to do? Is it real estate? Is it something else? Is real estate going to get you to something else? Just a great opportunity to, to take time every day and get clear about what that is. Get clarity is everything. What, your priorities and your focus, right? That's, that's what I'm saying about reimagine. Another thing in reimagine is this is definitely happening. So that's more, you know, in the mind. And now I'm talking about physical reimagining. What about reimagining your home and your workspace? The reality is most of us are, are in our business. We're definitely working more from home. I mean, Matt, hello. How often do you go outside anymore? I know. I Well, besides my daily walk. Now, you did this this year. You recreated space in where you're sitting right now, right? Yeah, right? absolutely. Yep. There's a whole thing about like the intention you do when you set even just your desk. And right now my desk is super cluttered and it's a reflection of how I'm feeling right now, to be quite honest. Um, you know, it's cluttered and therefore, you know, your space and feng shui, the way you choose to organize your rooms, your house, to the artwork that you put on your desk, on your on your walls, the way you rearrange and do anything is a reflection of if you study feng shui and believe that I do, that it is a reflection of where you are right now in this moment. So if you want to help clear and set the intention so you can reimagine um a supportive space for where you're moving and direct the direction you're moving in the new year and beyond, then clear your space and set some intentions around it. Okay. Yep. Um, redesign, organize it, have it be comfortable where you're sitting, have a place to do, have a place in your house that you can have quiet time for reading or reflection or meditation and your morning ritual and so forth. Right. So your home and your workspace. And if you're not going into the work, where's your workspace in your home? And is it, could you do something more that really supports you when you're in that space that you like? And I mean, it, it, to me, it's about how I feel where I'm sitting to the chair that I'm sitting on, to what's available, to what motivates me, what I see, maybe sound. It could be aromatherapy, candles, you know, all kinds of things can help you in your space. Right. Anything yeah, to add definitely. to that? Oh, I I totally agree with all that. You know how you know what this office looks like. This is like a a uh, mind dump. My mind dump. This whole wall next to me here is filled with inspiration for me, and I look at it every single day. And it doesn't it not really take you? Where especially I know for sure when you guys are you haven't been able to travel this year, but that all year keeps you guys motivated as you. No, we have to flip and... this around. You can't see this, to most people. This would look just like a big huge cluster of mess. Great, but not to me. I look at that thing and I dissect that every single day. And it's so, so awesome. And it that makes, is your vision board. It is. And some things, honest, some right? things make me you smile. Some, yeah, some things make me reflect. Something. It's just awesome. It's I love it. So You've got I, a living, breathing vision board. Yep. And uh, by the way, that is a going into reconnect. I should add vision, vision board to this. And I am going to talk about these two things I'm listening to right now that three, well, three things that really are inspiring me. So reconnect, there's, there's reconnect with yourself, reconnect with friends and family, and then reconnect with your business clients and database. Okay. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that last one because we've been talking ad nauseum about that, but I will mention uh, Yeah, we have. Here. But I do want to say to you that reconnecting with yourself is the most important part. And, you know, I struggle with this whole daily routine. I, you know what it is, is that I have to get, I have to overcome this issue of being a workaholic. Okay. And, you know, going to, I've been doing better at the end of the day now because I've been starting to read these books that I'm going to share. And I've been listening to the, this meditation masterclass that I'm in and I, got up this morning again and I did meditation, but I didn't do it. I did it on Monday and it's now Friday, but I didn't do it in between. And I just, I woke up this morning. And I'm like, why haven't I done that? Because I get up and my brain is already into the, all the things I need to do. And I wake up super early. I go to sleep early and I wake up super early and I go jump right into all the tasks I need to do. And it's just not working for me. And I don't, I'm going to change that. Yeah, um, I, I'm not as productive as I would be if I, how I handled my, myself this morning. Did a 30 minute guided meditation. That's good. That's my intention. Okay. So I love it. And you've got to find a way for you, whatever it is for you, your daily routine. Now, a couple things I want to recommend is Hal Elrod. And uh, there'll be a, I'll put in, give you another link to put in the show notes. He has got 
he's this guy's got such an inspirational story and if you're needing some really super inspiration if you're feeling kind of sorry for yourself or yeah. this has been a horrible year and you can't get yourself out of the mindset i want you to go watch uh go go check out this link go it's the miracle morning um i'll put the link in there it's like a, even if you just go to hell l rod he's launching his video he's got a movie that's been in production because he's written the book the miracle morning and several other books specifically to um different industries there's one for real estate just get the, the main one, the Miracle Morning. And it's about his savers, which is his morning routine where he goes through and he does silence, which is meditation, affirmations, visualization, E is exercise, R is uh, reading something like a passage from a book. And then the final S is scribing or journaling. Great, cool acronym. Uh, you could, you know, he's got versions where you can do each of those for a minute, you know, so you, you know, you can do a 10 minute saver to 30 minutes to an hour. But go to hellrod.com or the Miracle Morning. Just Google it. His video premiere is an online event. And I think it was like 10 bucks or something like that. But it's on tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock uh, Pacific, 12 Eastern. And uh, I want to watch it because um, I think it's going to be awesome. So I love all things Hal Elrod as far as inspiration and helping you with your daily routine, your morning routine. And as I mentioned, Kelly Howell, brainsync.com love her meditations i'm in the master class right now and it's really cool because she had a, a call a mystical live call where there were just hundreds of people on the zoom and she was uh talking about a few things and then took everybody through a group meditation and then she was answering questions and it was brilliant oh cool uh, really like that and then also so that's daily routine stuff personal and professional growth books podcasts or courses now's the time to pick something that you've been wanting to work on um, for me, I just, it came across this Christine Kane. It came into my email box. I'm not sure how on her list. And I get so many of these things all through the year, but right now, aren't you getting inundated with everybody wanting you to sell, sell you something? Oh yeah. I generally just delete them. And for some reason I went and she, because here's what it, here's what did it for me. The name of her book is soul sourced entrepreneur. Well, I have definitely found a mentor and somebody that I am. Uh, it's hard for me to find somebody who I go, wow, I really, really want to know more about this person. And I want to know, I like everything she's saying because it resonates. And I, I feel like I say a lot of the same things. And she's I haven't listened to her stuff friends. yet, man, because you keep sending me, sending me links, but her website is freaking awesome. I could totally identify with the, just the way she, yeah, uh, she's real. Just the way she described herself and what she's doing and on her website was fantastic. So I've been listening to her podcast. So she just launched this book. She's got a great story. She was, um, you know, it's just awesome because she's a, she's anti all the other business books and saying yeah. this is the way that you, you know, grow your business. And it's all linear thinking. And she's very creative. She was she's a songwriter. And so she had a job she hated and she said, and she, oh, my God, it's her vision board stuff. So last night, you know, and I've looked at vision board stuff. I uh, last night as I was doing some of her work and reading, reading her or listening to her podcast and I'm reading her book, something else kind of popped up for me about vision boards. That, I don't know. It was maybe an email from her and she's got a really I mean, it was like two dollars and ninety nine cents on Kindle. I'm practically halfway through it uh, from Amazon for Kindle. And it's just it's vision boards. But the way she the way she uh, talks about it and sets it all up. It's inspiring and you've got a vision board and it's it's classic. Get the get the um, magazines out and do all this. But she talks a lot about intention and that's the word. And so she talks about it's not goals. Goals are these things that are defined and and goals are fine and they can help you with. But think of the goals as the part that's the left brain and think of setting intention with yourself as the more creative right brain inspirational bigger picture the things we're talking about today and i'm really big i've been big about this words intentions this is like the way she describes it but vision boards and she has the classic stories of working in some cubicle job hating it and um she envisioned a she she just did a simple vision board with a picture of a house that she wanted well she actually you know a couple of years later she finds this house it's in Asheville, north carolina uh, and then anyway, she moves on to become a really cool indie, um, you know, songwriter, uh, working hard, 250 dates across the country, but all self-promotional, created her own label. And then that turned into her creating a coaching company 
mostly helping women, not just women, there's, but it seemed like there's predominantly women owned businesses in there, but um, called uh, Up Level You, which is people started asking her, how do you do all this? And then she started giving me advice and the one thing leads to another. Now she's got a super successful coaching practice that's now, of course, led to a book and all this other stuff. So anyway, real world, if you're looking for someone to really inspire you and you're more about this stuff I'm talking about, you're going to love this lady's stuff. So go check out Soul Sourced Entrepreneur. Go to Christine with CH, Christine Kane. Listen to her podcast. Go to her website. She's got some free tools. I just listened to the five phases of an entrepreneur. It was a free download she had. Um, and the vision board stuff is really, really good. And that's what I'm currently working on. But that is super inspiring to me and is in alignment with me. Um, it was brilliant. So um, it is brilliant. And now I'm super inspired because it's been a long time since I found something that really, really resonates with me. So and I know that it's, I know that you're enjoying it because you talk about it a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm about just, it. It's cool. Wow. I'm, yeah. I don't get wowed very often. No, you don't. It's, it's, it's very it's awesome. awesome. So that's about reconnecting, right? So sometimes you need a little help. So that's, I'm just sharing what works for me. We'd love to hear what, what maybe you, what works for you. You can get, go over to our show notes at, at uh, wbnlcoaching.com podcast and, and it'll take you right to our podcast. And there's a place on the post, right? I mean, there's a place for people to leave comments. Oh, sure. Reconnecting with friends and family. Um, that's, this is the time of the year to do that. I mean, hopefully we've all been sort of doing, I have found that I have reconnected with more people this year. Yep, absolutely. On a, on a powerful level because we're slowed down. We had to slow down a little bit. Uh, and through the holidays, I found this great article. I'm holding it up here from um, the Las Vegas Weekly. And um, it, there's just a cool article in here about it was focused on kids, but it was like holiday magic, how to help children feel safe and happy this year. And I just love, I'm going to see if I can find the online version of this to share because there was just endlessly cool things in here from baking projects to, but you could, whether you have kids or not, you, I found it like, I want to do some of these things. So creating a virtual greeting card was one of them, how to get your kids and stuff involved in a, um, everything from TikTok to going through photos. And I'm going to do this with Charlie, like creating a video of, of memories and stuff. And, and cause I'm working with them on how to do YouTube and so forth. So we may work on this where, he puts together the the photos and the memories and then maybe get him to record something and he sends it to everybody. I just yeah, that's that. so I mean, how personal is that? That's it's so cool. cool. Exploring your family history. And it just goes on and on about all these things that are things that you can do to reconnect with your kids, family over the holidays and, and friends and so forth. Um, so a couple of cool ideas there. And then obviously with your clients and past clients, we've talked about it. Go back to some of the other show notes. Uh, it's still not too late to reach out to send a, a gratitude, a happy New Year's connection, a happy holidays. Um, just nothing more than just checking in. You don't have to do be self-promotional on this. You can simply just, hey, Matt, just want to let you know, um, see how you're doing and wish you a happy holidays. Just to kind of even send in a card or you can do whatever you want. I, I did calendars, right? You got my calendar still? On the, it's on the fridge where it will be until the fridge is no more. There you go. So. All right. So that is just a, a little bit of what I'm working on that's helping me. I love this time of year to do this exact thing that we just talked about today. And I'm making myself and I'm, I'm having a good time with it because, you know, me, Matt, I'm like every waking moment, I ought to be working on something on the list. And so I'm yeah. making myself in the mornings and in the evenings do the things that, uh, that are that I talked about today. And boy, is it making me feel a little bit more centered. Um, it's It's opening up you know, all this clarity and focus and, and, and I'm feeling really good about it all. Well, and for crying out loud, it should just make you just a tad more happy for crying. That's right. right. right? Happy. I'm going right. to tell you, it's really funny because this, and we'll talk about more of this next week when we really kind of just kind of recap our years, but you know, our, our year, but I, I have been feeling pretty unjoyous in 2020, but I, I really, for a little while there was feeling like, am I ever going to feel joy again? And it wasn't COVID related. This was more personal stuff related. Right. And the on Saturday, I felt joy. And I recognized it. Really? I felt, I knew I was feeling joy. And I told Laura, I said, I feel joyous. And she did, I mean, it was, it was just, it was a great feeling. So it made me realize that that was, is still in my grasp. And it was a very cool thing. Good. That's so powerful what you just said, because I feel like there's a lot of people who are focusing on the, the not. Right. And, you know, 
this this stuff we talked about today can just be one thing could trigger a way for you to 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 switch your mind and feel more positive and something could do it something could inspire you and so i just encourage you to do something choose something and work on you don't be like me constantly okay there's 20 there's 25 things on the list now there's 24 things oh wait there's 30 things on the list right yeah, if you watch your list too closely, it never really gets to zero. It never does. And you know what? I don't care about that book. There's not going to be no inbox zero or checklist zero. Not for me. Because there's always something to be working on. But the, the balance is what I struggle with. And I continue to try to share with everyone. You beat your, you, 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 you're too hard on yourself, Jana Brian. You, you actually you, you do a lot of things outside of that little work box a lot. Yeah, um, I try, but I, I, uh, I... You have to eat lunch, which I always have to remind you. It's the habit piece that I, I struggle with. There's, yeah. there's, it's just creating the new habit and sticking with it, I know is going to be the, the, the thing for me, and it's breaking the old habits. So. That's all correct. That's, it. That's all it is. So. You're aware, that's for Where sure. This is the beginning of it all, so there you have it, folks. It's time to reflect, reimagine and reconnect with yourself and then everybody else out of yourself. Good stuff. Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the light surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are going to get our holiday jams on. This is the second year we've done this. Last year, we revealed our top five holiday jam, uh, jams, not jam, not Jan, but jams. But And speaking of Jan, Jan's list really encompassed all of the classics, right? She, she, you know, she really had the, she had the Bing Crosby on her list. My list was a little quirkier, I would say. You know, I, I had uh, Christmas wrapping by the waitresses on my list, and uh, uh, which I love and I listened to actually this morning before the podcast because it gets me uh, supercharged. So, you know, in the midst of COVID and, you know, because we really, it's hard to wrap anything into 2020 when you don't think a little bit about COVID because it has affected everyone's life in the entire world. So, you know, it has kind of reframed my whole way I even have been enjoying Christmas music this year. It's kind of interesting. We have Sirius Radio, and this year, Sirius has always had uh, several different Christmas channels that they have. They have like a traditional one, and they have a pop one, and now, this year there's, I swear, I'm not even kidding you when I say this, there's a dozen Christmas channels. There's soul and jazz and country and Hallmark and uh, all kinds of stuff. There is a Mannheim Steamroller channel on there. I love Mannheim Steamroller. Oh, me too. Carol the Bells is one of my favorite Christmas. It was on my list last year, as a matter of fact, from um, Mannheim Steamroller. And I love that. But this whole Mannheim Steamroller channel isn't just their music. It's music of the same ilk. And I've really been enjoying it. I listen to it a, a lot. We, My, my Sweet Pea and I always laugh uh, about when we get in the car. Like, what's going to be the song that you hear in the loop every single time you get in the car? Last <laughs> yeah. Last year it was Santa Baby. It's like if I hear Santa Baby one more time, literally gonna scream, right? Blue um, Christmas with Elvis. Well, that was the year before last. Oh, well. um, uh, this year, the song that we hear all the time in the song uh, in the car is "Let It Snow." So it's like every time we get in the car, it's "Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow," and um, uh, we're tired of it. <laughs> 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 Honestly. Hey, and it's only the 11th of December. Hello. So Jan O'Brien, let's let you jump in. You can start us off. What are your three top Christmas holiday jams 2020? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I went a totally different direction with this. None of them are, uh, I, I wanted to do something different than last year. And I was looking for things that were COVID related or stuff. And so I'm very excited to announce my first pick. <gasps> and I'm going to share this with you. I, let me see if I can share the screen, the application window. Here we go. It is from my absolute, if you can pop it up in there for the people that listen to, uh, I mean, that oh, sure. I'll put all of the YouTube down. videos up in our show notes. Mm -hmm. Say again? I said I'll put the YouTube videos of the songs up in yeah, our yeah. show notes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so my favorite band is 21 Pilots, okay? And they just dropped this this song and first of all 21 pilots is also on my list for level of concern which was one of the most popular 
songs created in quarantine. One of the things I found so unique in this 20, and we'll, I think we'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this one, the one where we do the wrap up is how artists with huge followings found ways to connect with their, with their uh, fan base with alternative lives and things that they were doing so people no could get music and, and, and surprise albums like Taylor Swift just dropped another album actually last night her second album in six months that was all recorded in quarantine 21 Pilots put in a song out called Level of Concern which is just an awesome song and it's a quarantine song that's one of the popular songs of the year but they just basically December 8th put this new song out called Christmas Saves the Year and it's awesome you got to go listen to it there's no official video for it because it just came out two days ago cool christmas saves the year by 21 pilots is my number one my number two okay. is not a christmas song oh it's kind of a it's more of a it's from um a, a group of artists and it's called uh and i'll just leave it i won't put it up here it's called times like these and it's a bbc radio one stay at home live song comp compiled compilation uh, that has just a great message in it and I think it's perfect for the holidays and it's really all about um, just what's times like these and coming together and so forth awesome. and my number three song is a remake of we are the champions the I know these aren't holiday but I don't care because that is the where I wanted to go with hey it. this is hey it's this is the um, COVID edition that's right it's the COVID edition so we are the champions oh my gosh but go watch the video of Adam Lambert and Queen doing it live just like uh, the 21 pilots links to those songs where they were on jimmy um uh the tonight show with they're all in their locations and they're record and they're doing that video live that's what queen and adam lambert did for we are the champions and it, it has all these shots of healthcare workers in it and they changed the words a little bit oh that's cool that's awesome so those are my three my three cool songs. And then the other things I put together for everybody today is if you've been looking for, there's a really cool playlist on Spotify. Somebody's just curating it. It's called The Sound of Virus. And it's all these artists who wrote songs in quarantine um, that, uh, that you know, or maybe changed some of the words and so forth. And 40 Songs About the Coronavirus is a Boston Globe article that's really awesome. That's how I found a couple of these. So anyway, that's my list. Very cool, Jenna. I love your list. See, we I think we switched places this year because mine were a little more not so traditional. Yours were traditional last year. And this year, I think we have switched gears. Because more. my three songs are, uh, although I wouldn't say as traditional, but they are certainly, they have certainly weathered the test of, of time. The, the Because, you know, a lot of the classic Christmassy stuff just is not hitting me this year. It's not resonating with me. But I'll tell you one thing that does. I love this song every year. Um, uh, but uh, for some reason this year, I just think a little bit of the irreverence, a little bit of the crankiness, a little bit of the okay is uh, in there. And that is the Chipmunk song, Christmas Don't Be Late. I still want a hula hoop. I freaking love that song. And oh, I, I like that just, song. It's just, well, who doesn't love that song, right? Uh, that song was actually released in 1961. Uh, it actually won a Grammy Award for Best Engineered Album and a Grammy Award for Best Children's Album that year. So it's a Grammy Award winning song. I didn't really even know that. You know, obviously, Alvin, the, Alvin and the Chipmunks, it was uh, created, written, and sung by Ross uh, Bagnazari, and I believe is how you say his last name. His stage name is David Seville. So from, from the Chipmunks, did you know that he sang all the parts in that? No. Yes, he sings every part. He's Dave, Alvin, Theodore, and Simon. And I that, didn't know that. Yeah, as a little known, well, it might not be a little known fact, but I don't think it's a well-known fact that he actually did all the voices for that. And that's why it won the Grammy Award for Best Engineered Album, because it was him, all four parts. So um, interesting. And I, I, I freaking love that song. My number two, I don't know why, and this is another song that I, I listen to and I love every year, but I'm telling you, I cannot get enough of this song. Um, and it, I'll give you a, um, uh, a line from it and you can guess the title. You don't need Deck the Halls or Jingle Bell Rock because you can spin a dreidel with Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, both Jewish. The Hanukkah song, the Hanukkah song by Adam Sandler is on my list of holiday jams this year. I cannot get okay. it. 
the lyrics of this song make me cry. I'm actually going to put the lyrics of all three of my songs in the show notes today because I, if you really look at the lyrics, it makes it much more enjoyable. And, you know, you think you know all the words, but when you really read this song, uh, Hanukkah song, well, no, actually all three of these really, when you really look at The Dreadle song? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, let me see. What is, uh, there's just so many, there's just funny lyrics all the way through that song. So Adam Sandler wins my number two spot for, uh, uh, just once again, a little bit of a reverence, right? Uh, in the thing. And I think that's uh, kind of just what's happening now. Now, my third song is, oh, by the way, the Adam Sandler song came out in 19, no, 2008 is when actually he did that. I, 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 I we have an old uh, CD of Saturday Night Live Christmas skits. Oh my God. And, and he actually sang this song on the weekend update. And I was looking at that and it's like, so the guy looks, he looks like he's 12 years old there singing the Christmas, the Hanukkah song is, it's awesome. So anyway, I remember seeing that one back when he was, when I was watching Saturday Night Live, uh, Saturday Night Live in 2008. So, all right. My third song um, is from The Grinch. And I think that also kind of encompasses a lot of what <laughs> feelings that people might be having this year. However, my song I chose is not the Grinch song about the ugly, nasty Mr. Grinch, which, you know, we can always all put someone's face to that, maybe, although the end of that changes the Grinch a little bit. And I'm not sure that some of the people we uh, say are Grinchy would change. But my um, favorite song from that show, and I think what really kind of what I have been it, it kind of just gets me every time I hear it is the um, the welcome Christmas song, the one where the who's come out at the end and they're oh, singing, yeah. you know, singing anyway. You know, that, that, that song ends with them saying, welcome Christmas while we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. And I think that more than any time in the longest time, probably since 9-11, quite frankly, have we uh, have been in a situation where we really, truly need to come together right and unite and just be be one and be on the same team i'm just telling you i just i love the grinch is that do you love the grinch yeah i've already watched it uh watch the uh i like the original cartoon i love the um the jim carrey obviously version the original right i uh, just watched that again uh, my other favorite is elf i had i've already watched elf like twice <laughs> because uh, i'm a will ferrell fan so I just, I love the Grinch when, you know, he, he's so happy. He goes and just kind of robs the entire town. He and Max, who is my favorite uh, animated dog, by the way, head back up to Mount Crumpet and they get to the top, you know, and he's all excited. He's talking about finding out how, the, you know, that Christmas is not coming. They're all waking up and he'll know what they do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Hoover will cry. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that he simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. However or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't thought before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means just a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food and the feast, and he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. And I think that if everybody just kind of has that in their heart, <laughs> this holiday season, we can kind of get through some of this mess that we're going through right now in this country and the world and get through it. Because you know what? You know, yes. you just, you just got to do it, people. God, that was a perfect way to end our segment. 
So I'm telling you, that that is my favorite. Uh, it keeps me going. It's weird to think that the that's from the Grinch would be my favorite holiday. Uh, he, had a, he had a transition. He had a transformation. Because you know what he did while he was standing? I'm, I'm going to tell you what he did, Jan O'Brien. When he was standing on top of Mount Crumpet, he reflected, he, he reimagined, and he reconnected with the people in Whoville. And there it is, folks. Boom. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 146 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. As always, you can find all of our show notes over at wbnl.podcast.com. I got nothing else. There's nothing else to say. <laughs> Thank you for the reading. Um, I have much gratitude in my heart today for that. And I mean, who cannot love Dr. Seuss? The words right of on. Dr. Seuss. I mean, please. I'm telling you. You surprised me with that. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, it's, it leaves me with a good a good feeling today as I move awesome. on about the rest of my day and week. And, and by the way, happy Hanukkah to everyone. Speaking of Adam Sally and the yeah. Hanukkah song, Hanukkah started yesterday. It's all good. So next week we have two more good episodes until we jump into the new year and, and uh, we're going to start sharing our content and some of the new trainings we're, we're sharing, um, we're creating in our podcast. So that's what my plan is anyway. Matt's going to get back to his wandering ways. That's right. Uh, on some level with that and we look forward to it. So uh, what we have two things left. We're going to talk, a good, I am going to talk more on intentions and this uh, one piece of our path book, my path book that I really like and a couple of ways for you to use that. That's next week. And we're going to wrap up with our review of 2020, uh, sort of like a journal entry for posterity with uh, Matt and I's uh, things that impacted us and, and the, the, the highs, the lows, the in-betweens and, and, and a way to kind of put it into the vault, put it on our blog and look back on it years to come. And don't forget, everyone, every Monday and Wednesday, we are doing coach tips and Canva tips in our private Facebook group. It's Jan. Live. Yeah, Jan. Yeah, live at 7.15 or 7. If you're old enough to get up with us, you can come in and ask some questions and we will help you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, go over to Facebook. It is called the WB Nails Coaching Wanderers Club. Uh, information will be in our show notes as well as here on the bottom of the screen. But you can just go to Facebook and type in WB. I think you can just type in Wanderers club actually and it will come it up doesn't find it you got to put in the wbnl i've been checking that okay it there come you. Up right away all right so you can find it in there we'll be more than happy to let you join on in you'll get our our weekly lives as well as a whole bunch of other information we have here from wbnl coaching all right guys you know what as we always say every week get up get out mask up be safe and be forever wandering but not lost absolutely <laughs>